the AXP 120X67 from Thermalright is a low profile CPU cooler that sells for around 30 ish USD. But is it any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I test and review PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and video cards. Before I get into the overview, to have full disclosure, Thermalrite did send me over this cooler to test and review, but as always, all opinions expressed in this video are mine. So if you do end up liking the video, please hit that like button, and if you really like the video, how about hitting that subscribe button, because it does help out a lot. Okay, on to the overview. There are three versions of the AXP120. There is the AXP120X67, the AXP120X67 Black ARGB, and the AXP120X67 White ARGB. These sell for between 28 and 31 USD on Amazon.com. Okay, let's go over what you get in the box. There is the heat sink and fans, of course. There is an installation guide. Two sets of fan clips, even though this heatsink can't actually do a push-pull, so that's interesting. There's a small tube of thermal compound. The mounting hardware for Intel and AMD. There is no ARGB adapter, so your motherboard will need an ARGB header for the LEDs to work. Okay, taking a closer look at the heatsink, there are six 6mm continuous copper heat pipes. The cold plate is copper with a nickel plating. The black coating on the heatsink and heat pipes looks pretty okay. There are a few small spots near the cold plate where you can actually see the copper on the heat pipes. But once the cooler is installed, you won't be able to see those spots, so take that as you will. On the black version, the mounting bars and fastening bars are painted black, but I believe for the other two versions, they are just silver or bare metal. But again, once the cooler is installed, you won't be able to see the mounting hardware, so yeah. Moving on to the fan. The fan is a Thermalrite TLC120-15BS PWM. The B stands for black and the S stands for ARGB. As it says in the name, it is a PWM fan, so it has the 4-pin PWM connector. The fan has 11 blades. There are little rubber covers on all of the corners. It has a max rated RPM of 1800, and it is a fluid dynamic bearing. Okay, the dimensions of this cooler with the fan attached is 67 millimeters high by 120 millimeters wide by 124 millimeters deep. Based off these dimensions, there will be RAM clearance issues. Thermorite does allow for up to 45 millimeters for the size of the dim, which means most non-ARGB dims will fit. However, ARGB dims will likely not fit. Now, you wouldn't really be able to see the ARGB dims, so going with them doesn't really make any sense anyways. For socket compatibility, the AXP120 is compatible with most Intel mainstream sockets. It is also compatible with Intel's HPC sockets. For AMD, it's compatible with AM4 and AM5. Moving on to how to install the CPU cooler, I'll be installing it onto an AM4 motherboard. The installation between Intel and AMD sockets is different, so if you are planning on installing this onto an Intel socket, please check the installation guide. As always, before you start, make sure you have a flat, clean, and sturdy surface. You should also have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat, but in a pinch, you can always use the box that your motherboard came in. You will also need a PH2 screwdriver, plus you should have some isopropyl alcohol and something to wipe the CPU with. To install the CPU cooler onto an AM4 or AM5 motherboard, you will need the backplate that came with your motherboard. So with the backplate flat on the mat and the CPU installed into the motherboard, align the holes on the motherboard to the standoffs on the backplate. Then with the motherboard flat, place the AMD plastic spacers over each of the backplate standoffs. Then find the AMD mounting bars and AMD mounting screws. Place the mounting screws through the holes on the mounting bars. Then align the mounting screws to the plastic spacers, making sure the mounting bars are facing in. Once you have, screw the mounting screws into the holes or the standoffs of the backplate. When you have the mounting bars fully installed, 
it's time to clean off the CPU with some isopropyl alcohol. Plus, if you haven't already, now would be a good time to install your RAM because once the CPU cooler is installed, you won't be able to. With that done, apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. Now, making sure to remove the fan from the heatsink and the sticker from the bottom of the cold plate. Once you have, place the heatsink cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS, making sure to align the screw threads on the mounting bars to the spring retention screws on the fastening bar. Now, screw the two spring retention screws on the fastening bar into the mounting bars. You will need to place the screwdriver through the openings on the heatsink to do this. Once that's done, install the fan onto the heatsink and plug in the PWM and ARGB connectors into the motherboard. And that's the installation. Now we'll be going over the fan's PWM range and showing you the ARGB LEDs. So at 100% PWM with the fan attached to the heatsink, this motherboard is showing the RPM at 2080-ish and that has a DBA of 37.5. That DBA reading is taken from 20 inches away on an open air test bench. Dropping the PWM down to zero, the motherboard is now showing the RPM at 380-ish, and that has the DBA at or below my noise floor of 32. Okay, now for the ARGB LEDs. I think they look really good. The colors are really vivid and look really nice, to me at least. The brightness is adequate for a medium lit room. Other than that, I'm really not sure what else to say. Now, before I get onto the temperature charts, if you are liking this video and are appreciating all the testing I've done, then please consider supporting the channel by using the Amazon Associates links in the description. All you need to do is click on the link that suits your location, and when you add an item or items to your cart and order them, the channel will get a small kickback at no added cost to you. Okay, now that I'm all done with that, onto the temperature charts. If you haven't watched my CPU cooling testing methodology video, I strongly suggest you do. It's where I go over the how and what of my CPU cooler testing. I'll put a card above and I will also have it linked in the description. So the AXP120X67 in my 67 watt test with the fans at full speed had the CPU's average steady state temperature at 63.6 C. Then noise equalizing the fan to 35 dBA had the CPU at 64.5 C, so almost a one Celsius difference. In my 87 watt test with the fan running at full speed, the AXP120 had the CPU's average steady state temperature at 79.1 C. Then when I noise equalized the fan to 35 dBA, the CPU was at 80.3 C, so just over a one Celsius difference. Then in the 150 watt test with the fans running at full speed, the CPU had an average steady state temperature of 92.4 C, which is really getting up there. Then in the noise equalized test, the CPU started thermally throttling, so it failed. Okay, so what do I think of the AXP120X67? First off, I think the CPU cooler looks great. I do really like how the 120 millimeter ARGB fan is actually facing you. So you get all that color coverage or however you want to kind of word that. Now that is relative to a standard tower cooler where you're just kind of looking at the top of the heatsink. Now it is also really competitively priced at 30 ish US dollars, depending on which version you go with, obviously plus minus a dollar there. And then along those lines that you do actually get the color options. You do have the white version or the black version or just the base metal version, which is always nice. Its performance was okay for a low profile cooler, but it couldn't or didn't match the standard tower coolers. Meaning if your case can fit a tower cooler and you're wanting the best performance possible, you should be going with a tower cooler. But if you're building in a low profile case and you're wanting an air cooler, this is one of the best priced to performance low profile coolers you can get. I would be perfectly comfortable gaming on a stock 5900X or I guess it would be the AM5s are a little bit warmer. So I probably say a 7800X or Intel's equivalent. But if you are wanting to do more than just game and you are building in a small form factor or low profile case, I would recommend going with an AIO rather than this. You'll get just a little bit better performance. Well, that's all I got for this one. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, 
please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There is also the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. All you need to do is agree to the server rules. Then you can view all of my charts. A link is in the description. There is also Patreon if you'd like to support their channel directly. Again, a link is in the description. Uh, you may want to check out this video here. It should be along the same lines of the video you just watched. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.